Hello and welcome back to my favorite people. Hope you're doing well. I'm incredibly excited for today's video because simplified and zoomed out charts like this one really help me manage my emotions and stick to my long-term strategy, especially during very choppy Bitcoin summers where sentiment keeps flipping back and forth between fear and greed. I mean, literally just two days ago, everybody was panicking over these Mt. Gox repayments that are beginning next month and how they were going to bring all of this new supply to the market. Of course, the German government also started offloading some Bitcoin via Coinbase and Kraken, and then the US government decided to join them by sending $240 million worth of Bitcoin to Coinbase, and everybody was panicking. And all of a sudden, just 48 hours later, we get a Vanek filing for a Solana ETF, and all of a sudden, everybody is greedy and excited again, saying this is just the beginning. We're going to get a lot more altcoin ETFs now. And Galaxy comes out today and says the Ethereum spot ETFs could see $5 billion of net inflows. And now all the calls for the start of alt season have come once again. And when you actually zoom in and look at the chart, all we've had is this tiny bounce here after months of downtrend. But everybody only remembers the past 24 hours and gets excited over whatever the most recent narrative is. And now don't get me wrong, obviously my portfolio is about 13 to 15% Solana, so I'm very happy to see this news, but this is something that's a long-term bullish catalyst. This ETF is not gonna get approved for months and months and months if, if it even does get approved. And yes, I'm bullish on the Ethereum spot ETFs in the long term, but we have no idea what the outflows are gonna be like from Grayscale. And funny enough, the irony is there's literally a Grayscale ETH E advertisement right here. And if I refresh this page, you'll see that they are paying a lot of money to advertise on Coindesk. I think the parent company of Grayscale also owns Coindesk. So it's kind of funny that literally all of the advertisement space is being taken up by this Ethereum Grayscale Trust. Not the best sign in my opinion because they're probably trying to get as many inflows as they can because they know they're gonna be seeing outflows because of those elevated fees. But the irony is pretty funny to me that this article is literally saying we're gonna see five billion of inflows into these ETFs. But then we have ETH E advertising on the sides because they're likely to be seeing a lot of outflows with the elevated fees they've charged for so long. But this is exactly why emotional management is so important. It's very easy to panic sell and be scared when you see all of this looming sell pressure. And then it's very easy to aggressively FOMO back in whenever we see these positive headlines. So in my opinion, the best way that I've found to navigate all of that uncertainty is by having a longer term strategy like this one, because it feels like we've been in this range for three years now, just chopping around. And of course, every time we're close to the 70,000s, everybody is euphoric calling for higher. And then once we're close to the high 50,000s, everybody's calling for doom and saying it's all over. But really all we've done for the past three to four months is chop around in a range and wreck leveraged and short-term traders in both directions. And now full disclosure, I know a lot of people aren't gonna agree with this chart. You have some Bitcoin people that say Bitcoin is undervalued as long as it's below a million dollars because it's its destiny to reach that price. And then you have other people that'll say any price above 10K is overvalued because the Fed is gonna crash the market and cause a recession. So anybody buying above 10K is an idiot. I don't agree with either party, obviously. I like to be somewhere in the middle. I do think that 70 to 50K is roughly fair value. You're not gonna lose a ton of money on a multi-year time frame by buying here, but you're also not gonna make a ton of money this cycle by buying Bitcoin at 60K and riding it to 100 or 90K or 120 or wh wherever it ends up topping out. So as long as we're in this range, I'm not really that interested in adding any positions until we get closer to what I consider to be overvalued and anytime we get above 70K, I'm definitely not interested in adding Bitcoin exposure to the entries that we have from much lower prices. So really, as long as we're in this zone, I just consider it chop and reaccumulation before the next move higher. And of course, that agrees very nicely with our summer chop thesis. And I know the levels I have marked out here seem very arbitrary, but I promise you there's a reasoning behind it. I consider this to be fair value because it's around the 20 week moving average and it's also the all time high from the previous cycle. 
I consider this to be undervalued because these are pre-spot ETF prices. And then I consider these to be very undervalued because obviously it required Luna and FTX collapsing and all of these market-based black swans to send us this low. And I don't think we're gonna revisit those prices now that we have the demand from the spot ETFs and the reduced volatility. Of course, if we enter, if we enter a depression scenario or a terrible recession, anything is possible, which is why we're always discussing multiple outcomes. But I consider anything under this 200 week moving average to be very undervalued. I expect anything near and above it to be undervalued. And then once we start getting to new all time highs and price discovery, that's usually where not much money is made this cycle. If you're going to be buying Bitcoin at 80,000, 85,000 with hopes to sell at 500 K within a year or something like some moon boys will tell you. And that's why I have them mapped out this way. And I consider 90 plus to be overvalued because I still expect a ton of sell pressure as we approach 100 K Bitcoin. If we get that high this cycle, because that's a number that we have been discussing and everybody has had their eye on since we hit 10 K Bitcoin seven or eight years ago. So if I had zero Bitcoin exposure, I wouldn't mind buying a tiny bit here. But since I'm already 80% allocated via my portfolio, I'm really not interested adding any exposure unless we see this undervalued region. And if we never see it again, that's fine. I will just ride the cycle with my existing positions, but I would not rule anything out because we know how much Bitcoin likes to surprise us. And no matter what the narratives are at the time, whether we go down because of Mt. Gox or because of the German or US government selling, I'm going to stick to my long term strategy because I'm bullish long term on this asset and I'm not going to make any emotional decisions because of some summer chop or because of sentiment flipping back and forth. And speaking of sentiment flipping, I'm not going to get that excited until Bitcoin can reclaim its 20 week moving average. We held it since all the way back in October of 2023, and we did break that trend recently, which historically is a pretty bad sign for Bitcoin. But of course, we still have a couple of days left to go before the weekly close. We have the Ethereum ETFs launching the first week of July. So definitely a lot more time for this price action to develop. But you're not going to see me saying anything too bullish in the short term until Bitcoin can reclaim its 20 week moving average. And of course, the price action from the dollar is going to have a huge impact on that. And as of right now, the dollar is still slowly grinding its way higher day by day. And of course, that 10650 region is the pivotal level to watch because we know Bitcoin is not going to enter a mania phase until we see an aggressive breakdown in the dollar index. And that is not what this chart looks like it's going to do anytime soon. Now, something that could have a huge impact on the dollar tomorrow is the PCE print that's going to be happening. I believe our last print was about 2.8. The expectation for tomorrow is 2.6, which is quite an improvement, especially because core PCE has been in a downtrend for quite a while now. And we know since the labor market has been weakening, there's a lot of pressure right now for inflation to come down so the Fed can begin easing before something breaks in the labor market. And we know their end of year projection for core PCE was 2.8 and they're expecting to cut rates one time this year if that ends up being our end of year number. But maybe if we end up seeing that 2.6 number, the market will start pricing in more Fed rate cuts. Right now, the market is only pricing in two for the remainder of this year. And that could put downward pressure on the dollar index tomorrow. But of course, we're going to have to wait and see what that data print actually comes in at because it's too early to assume that this 2.6 expectation is going to be right. And we're still seeing quite a bit of stubbornness from inflation. So even if it were to go down to 2.6, it might just bounce back up a little bit and continue chopping around in the high 2%. As for the S&P 500 still grinding higher as it loves to do, it's probably going to react to the inflation print tomorrow as well. So I'll be watching that. And we're still seeing that divergence that the S&P 500 has been able to keep going higher while Bitcoin has seen this recent sell off. So we'll see if we'll get more clarity after that inflation data tomorrow. As for Ethereum actually looks significantly better than Bitcoin and it's doing something very interesting here where we rallied from January to March and then we retraced half of the rally and spiked again. And now we've retraced half of that more recent rally. 
So I think we're gearing up for some real volatility depending on how these Ethereum ETF launches go within the next two weeks or so. And of course, all eyes are gonna be on those inflows. I think there's a lot of disagreement right now on how much demand those ETFs are actually going to have. And I also expect the success of the Ethereum ETFs to have a huge impact on Solana because there's a pretty big consensus right now that Solana is next in line, even though it's gonna be months and months and months before we get a Solana ETF. If we see some decent demand for the Ethereum one and Galaxy is even somewhat close to being correct with their estimation here of about 1 billion of inflows per month, I would expect that to put some upward pressure on Solana as well. It did have a nice reclaim of the level we discussed in my last video at 138, but just like for Bitcoin, we would really like to see it reclaim this 20 week moving average if we can get bullish in the short term, but this looks like it could be a retest and rejection if we don't end up seeing big demand for these Ethereum ETFs, because we would expect Solana's ETF demand to be even lower than the larger asset Ethereum. So in the meantime, we're gonna monitor the relationship between altcoins and Bitcoin way too early to be calling alt season in my opinion, but maybe some nice demand for Ethereum could change that. And maybe we'll finally get that breakdown in Bitcoin dominance below 54% that everybody is waiting for and talking about online. That's really the level to watch, in my opinion. I just added these labels here of pain for the market, most likely if Bitcoin goes above 56%, and then alt season if Bitcoin gets a clean break below 54. But for now, still chopping around in this range, waiting for a catalyst, which is why my portfolio remains unchanged. And I'm pretty happy with the fact that the three assets that I'm holding in my portfolio are the three first ones that are gonna be getting some spot ETF demand even if Ethereum and Solana might not see any huge inflows like Bitcoin did. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Definitely a huge core PCE print tomorrow. And in my opinion, Bitcoin is still chopping around within this fair value range. And because I already have the exposure I'm happy with, I feel no reason to sell or buy at these prices. But let me know what you expect. Do you agree with this? Would you consider us at fair value? Or would you consider us still undervalued or overvalued depending on your preferences? And again, this is a one to two year time frame conversation. I'm not saying Bitcoin is fair value here if you're buying to hold for 10 years plus. Obviously, that's a very different conversation because I'm very bullish on this asset in the long term. Just like I'm bullish on the S&P 500, there will be black swans along the way. There will be huge shakeouts, but money devaluation and national debt increases have to get funded somehow. And I think that's going to put a macro uptrend on risk assets in the longer term. And that's why we Bitcoin. But anyway, thank you so much for your support on the recent videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.